The unhappy fate of men, that accursed thing, ravenous and grim, swift was ready. Thirty nights he seized upon their couch, their coach. Thence back he got him gloating over his prey, faring homeward with his glut of murder to seek his lairs. Thereafter at dawn with the first light of day was Grendel's strength in battle made plain to men. Then was weeping after feasting upraised, a mighty cry at morn, the glorious king, their prince proven of old. Joyless sat his stout and valiant heart, suffered and endured sorrow for his knights. When men but scanned the footprints of that foe, that demon cursed, too bitter was that strength strife to dire and weary to endure nor was it longer space than but one night ere raw again cruel murders more and grieved not for them his deeds of enmity enmity and wrong too deep was he therein thereafter not far to seek was the man who elsewhere more remote sought him his couch and a bed among the lesser chambers since now was manifested and declared thus truly to him with token plain the hatred of that hall keeper thereafter he who escaped the foe kept him more distant and more safe even thus did one lord it and against right make war alone against them all until empty stood that best of houses long was the while t- Twelve winters is space, the Skilding's dear lord, endured anguish and every woe and sorrow deep, so it was made known to men and revealed to the children of mankind. Sadly in songs that Grendel strove a while with Rothgar, wrought hate and malice, evil deeds and enmity for many a year, a strife unceasing truce would be not having with any man of the Danish host, nor would withhold his deadly cruelty, nor accept terms of payment, and there no cause had any of the counselors to look for golden recompense from the slayers' hands. Nay, the fierce killer pursued them still, both knights and young, a dark shadow of death lurking, lying in wait, in long night keeping the misty moors men know not, with their sorcerers of hell and their wanderings roam. Thus many a deed of evil that foe of men, stalking dreadfully alone, did often work. Many a grievous outrage in Hiorot's hall, bright with gems in the dark nights, be he dwelt. Never might he reproach the precious throne of grace in the presence of God, nor did he know his will that was great torment to the Skilding's lord. Anguish of heart, many a mighty one sat off communing counsel they took what it were best for stout-hearted men to do against those dire terrors at times they vowed sacrifices to idols in their heathen tabernacles in prayers implored the slayer of souls to afford them help against the sufferings of the people such was their want the hope of heathens they were minded in their hearts of hell nor knew they the creator the judge of deeds nor had heard of the lord god nor verily had learned to praise the guardian of the heavens and the king of glory woe shall be to him that though fiendish malice shall thrust down his soul into the fire's embrace, to look for no comfort in no wise to change his lot. Blessed shall he be he that may after his death day go unto the Lord and seek peace in the bosom of the Father. Even thus over the sorrows of that time did the son of Hilfdeen brood unceasingly, nor could that wise prince put aside his grief. Too strong was that strife, too dire and weary to endure, that had come upon that folk." Torment, fierce and cruel, that they needs must bear, the greatest of miseries that came by night. Of this of Grendel's deeds the knight of Hygelac, esteemed among the Geats, heard in his home afar, in that a day of man's life, here in might, the strongest of mankind was he, noble and of stature beyond man's measure. He bade men prepare him a good craft upon the waves, saying that over the waters where the swan rides he would seek the warrior king that prince renowned, since he had need of men with that voyage. Little fault did wise men find, dear though he were to them. They encouraged his valiant heart, and they observed the omens 
champions of the people of the Geats, that good man had chosen from the boldest that he could find, and fi- and fifteen in all they sought now their timbered ship, while that warrior, skilled in the ways of the sea, led them to the margins of the land. Time passed on, afloat upon the waves was the boat beneath the cliffs. Eagerly the warriors mounted the prow, and the streaming seas swirled upon the sand. Men at arms bore to the bosom of the ship their bright harness, their cunning gear of war. They then, men on a glad voyage thrust her forth with her well-joined timbers over the waves of the deep she went sped by the wind sailing with foam at throat most like unto a bird until in due hour upon the second day her curving beak had made such way that those sailors saw the land the cliffs beside the ocean gleaming and sheer headlands and capes thrust far to the sea then for that sailing ship the journey was at an end thence the men of the of the wind-loving folk climbed swiftly up upon the beach and made fast the seaborne timbers of their ship. Their mail shirts they shook, their rement of war. They gave thanks to God that the passage of the waves had been made easy for them. Then from the high shore the watchmen of the Skildings, who of duty guarded the cliffs by the sea, saw them bearing over the gangway bright shields and gallant harness anxiety smote him in his heart to learn what these men might be he went then to the strand riding on his horse rothgar's knight and mightily he brandished in his hands his stout spear shaft and in words of parley he asked what warriors are ye clad in corslets that have come thus steering your tall ship over the streets of the sea hither over deep waters lo i long while have dwelt at the ends of the land keeping watch over the water that in the land of the Danes no foemen might come harrying with raiding fleet never have armed men more openly here essayed to land knowing not at all the password of men in array of war nor having the consent of kinsmen never have I seen on earth a greater among men than is, a, than is one of you a warrior in arms no hall servant is he in brave show of weapons if his fair countenance lie not and his peerless mind now must I learn of what people you are sprung rather than ye should pass on hence false spies into the land of the Danes come now ye dwellers afar voyagers of the sea hear my thought plainly spoken in haste it is best that ye declare whence your ways have led to him then the chief made answer the leader of the company opened his store of words we are by race of men of the Geats and hearth comrades of Higelac, famed among peoples, was my father, a noble warrior in the forefront of battle. Ecthiao was he called, many a winter he endured, ere in age he departed from his courts. Full well doth every wise man remember him far and wide over the earth. With friendly purpose are we now come seeking thy master, the son of Hilfdeen, defender of his people. Be thou kindly in counsel to us. A mighty errand have we to him renowned. The Lord of the Danes, and there a certain matter shall not be kept secret, as I think thou knowest. If so it be, as in truth we have heard tell, that among the Skildings I know not what a deadly thing, a doer of deeds of secret hatred on dark nights, and dreadful wise, makes plain his monstrous malice, shame of men, and felling of the dead, concerning that with ungrudging heart i can give counsel to rothgar how he wise and good will overcome his enemy should there or ever come change or betterment in the torment of his woes how those burning griefs will be assuaged or else for ever after he will endure a time of tribulation and dire need while there in its high place abides the best of houses the watchman spake sitting there upon his steed fearless servant of the king a man of keen wit who takes good heed will discern the truth in both words and deeds my ears assure me that here is a company of friendly mind towards the lord of the skildings go ye forward bearing your weapons and your armor i will guide you my young esquires Moreover, I will command honorably to guard your ship, your new tarred vessel, upon the sand against every foe, until with its timbers and its wreathed prow it bears back, again, over the streams of the sea, its beloved master, to the weather mark, 
To such a doer of good deeds it shall surely be granted that he will come sound and whole through this onset of war. They went then marching forth. Their fleet vessel remained now still. Deep-bosomed ship it rode upon its hawser fast to the anchor. Figures of the boar shone above. Cheek guards adorned with gold, glittering fire tempered. Fierce and challenging war mask kept guard over the life kept guard over life. The men hastened strutting together until they could descry the builded hall adorned bright with gold. Foremost it was in fame of all houses under heaven among the dwellers of earth, wherein the mighty one abode, the light of it shone over a many a land. Then that warrior bold pointed out to them, clear to see the court of proud men, that they might march straight thither. Then that warrior turned his horse, and thereupon spake these words, Time it is for me to go. May the Almighty Father in his grace keep you safe upon your quests. To the sea will I go against unfriendly hosts, my watch to keep.